Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's OSA Technical Group webinar, Medical Hyperspectral Imaging, Artificial Intelligence, and Image-Guided Surgery. My name is Hale walter Pilon, and I'll be moderating this webinar on behalf of the Optical Society today. We are very excited to have Bao Weifei joining us for this webinar, which was organized jointly by our Photonic Detection Technical Group and our Molecular Probes and Nanobio Optics Technical Group. I want to start today by telling you a bit about our technical groups. OSA technical groups aim to create vibrant and active communities for all of our members to participate in. OSA offers members more than 40 different technical groups to choose from, and each of these groups are led by OSA members who volunteer their time to organize engaging activities such as today's webinar presentation. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Shu Ren Hu, who will tell you a bit more about both the technical groups that are responsible for organizing this webinar presentation and introduce you to our speaker. Shiren, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Thanks for, um, thanks for attending this webinar. Um, yeah, today's webinar, uh, as Hannah has uh, introduced, is, uh, is jointly um, hosted by two technical groups, which is because the topic is so interesting to both of the groups. Um, the first group I'm going to introduce is the uh, uh, molecular props and a nano bio optics technical group. So uh, this group's uh, focus is to use a molecularly uh, agent for both imaging and treating um, biological tissues. So it's very related to um, biomedical um, and clinical like related disease and uh, researches. So we have about 1000 members. Um, and the, the next group is a, a photonic detection group. So uh, as the name said, this group is highly, heavily involved in the detection um, using photons for imaging and uh, data links and uh, uh, communication and uh, spectroscopic studies. Um, so anything that's re related to the optical de detection is within the scope of this research group as well. So we have about uh, uh, 2,000 members. Uh, so today's topic, as uh, Hannah said, we are very honored to kickstart our 20 uh, 21 year with Dr. Dr. Faith um, webinar today, medical hyperspectral, hyperspectral imaging, artificial intelligence and imaging guided surgery. So Dr. Faith well, is a very um, established professor at the University of Te um, Texas at Dallas and also a professor at the UT uh, Southwestern Medical Center. And uh, Dr. Faith is also a fellow of SPIE and uh, AIMBE. So without further ado, um, I'm going to give the floor to uh, Dr. Fee and uh, start our talk today. First, uh, thank uh, Optic Society for the invitations and also thank Dr. Hoos and for introduction. And so today I'm going to talk about uh, hyperspectral uh, imaging and focus on uh, machine learning and image guided surgery. So a little bit of background about the uh, hyperspectral imaging. And so compared to uh, human eyes, that can only see a two-dimensional image. So hyperspectral image can capture a series of image and at hundreds of a spectral band. So the hyperspectral image is called a hypercube and it is a three dimensions. And so two dimensions in spatial domains, X and Y, and one dimensions in the spectral uh, domains. And so every pixel you can see from the graph net is has a spectrals and so hyperspectral and signatures and uh, can be used uh, to differentiate different type of tissues. So hyperspectral imaging record many spectral slides across uh, from visible to near infrared. And with what our eye can only see is visible light approximate from uh, 400 to 800 nanometer wavelength. And hyperspectral imaging can detect light from a uh, lower 200 nanometer to all the way to 2,500 nanometers. And this will extend our eyes and uh, more than five times in terms of uh, wavelength range. So by using a uh, hyperspectral imaging, we hope to see many things our eye cannot see it. And also use the large data set and uh, to detect uh, very subtle changes. So um, with the latest uh, hyperspectral imaging cameras and so the spatial resolutions now can be as high as five microns. And so you can see cells and levels. And so the spe spectral resolutions can be as, as uh, two mic nanometers and as hundreds of kind of spectral bands you can get. If you have a large field of views and you get a big data set of 500, uh, five megabytes per image cubes. So we got a lot of data set 
And so the question is, do you think all these data sets are useful and how we can use these data sets? And so some uh, quality controls on data acquisitions uh, is so important. And also the currently our community in lack of uh, quantitative imaging analysis tools for hyperspectral image data set. We also need uh, high performance computing powers and to process these large data set. One image, you have five gigabyte, how to handle this image. And also we need a kind of new kind of modeling and a machine and any method to process uh, this data set in order to extract the information out. So there's a lot of applications in recent decades about hyperspectral imaging. And so one is uh, for cancer detections and the diagnosis of cancers in vivo and ex vivo. Another large application is image guided surgeries uh, for detections of residual tumor during surgeries. That's one of the focus for this talk. There's also other uh, applications, for example, detection of diabetic food, detections of ischemia, and also measure uh, tissue oxygen situations, wound, nerves, dentals, eyes, blood vessel, and et cetera. So in this uh, review papers, and we published earlier, and so we summarize all different kinds of applications and also and summarize a different hyperspectral imaging systems. And this is one of the top downloaded papers from a Journal of Biomedical Optics and with more than 1,000 uh, citations on Google Scholars, if uh, some of uh, the audience are interested uh, in this topic. So uh, what, what is the premise of using hyperspectral imaging for cancer detections? And so during the new pleasure transformations and the tissue architectures and the morphology change lead to the change in the tissue optical properties and further lead to the change in the diffuse uh, re reflectance. So hyperspectral imaging measure the diffuse reflectance from the tissue surface and carrying the quantitative information about the tissue structure, about tissue compositions, which can be further analyzed to detect the tissue physio and pathologies. If we look at the cancer tissue and benign tissues, we may be able to say the difference at the molecular levels and the cellular levels, tissue levels, and also physiological levels. This difference uh, can be quite complex. You can say the system is complex and all the interaction is also complex. So the change in reflectance hyperspectral imaging can be due to all these changes. And this brings some challenges and for quantifications and also bring some greater opportunities as now we have more power in computing. We have more kind of uh, methods to handle these uh, data set. So if we look at a spectral uh, from different tissues, so the average spectral curve uh, may show some difference between normal or cancer tissues. However, if we look at individual pixel at the pixel levels, and there's some standard deviations. So their spectral curves have some overlap. So our human eyes may not be able to differentiate benign and from the human uh, tumor tissues. So there's some intrinsic flower force and we may be able to use those signatures such as NADs, NADH, FADs. Well, they may be different in the cancer cells and normal cells. That's one of the kind of premise we can uh, targeting. So at the tissue levels, and so the hemoglobins, the oocyte hemoglobins also contribute to spectral signature change because the angiogenesis in the tumor tissues and that further I change the spectrals and of the tumors and uh, a tissue level. On the other hand, there's some collagens and melanin, protein, waters also have significant contributions to the spectral data set. And for hyperspectral imaging, we collect a lot of data set. So data is big, but it's also quite complex how to control the quality of the data during image acquisitions and how to quantify the data and extract useful information. And so these are important questions. And today I will focus on one example, how we use uh, hyperspectral imaging for detection of head and neck cancers and also for image guided surgery. We started with a very simple animal experiment 
and step by step, and then move to human patients. So in the past years, my group have conducted several and uh, a preclinical study, and so I will start with the simple one. So we start with uh, uh, xenograft models of head neck cancers. So my PhD student uh, Golan Nu, and also my collaborator uh, Dr. Georgia Chen and Dong Xing Wang, and I work on the animal study. We inject head neck cancer cell with uh, green fluorescence proteins into new mice because those cancer cells has GFP signals. We know where they're going, uh, where they are. And so we acquire a hyperspectral image data set and for these animals. And then we perform imaging acquisitions and we remove those GFP signals and then to say if we can detect those uh, tumor cells. So here's uh, some examples and uh, of cancer detection results. And so the first row is the RGB uh, composite image from hyperspectral cube. And uh, the second row is the corresponding uh, GFP reference standard. And you can say those cancer cells light up. And the third row is the cancer probability map produced by our classification method. So the red color means high probability of being cancer while the blue is high probability of being normal cells or background. So we achieved uh, a good sensitivity in this model. So we developed a different imaging classification method for hyperspectral image. And this is um, our minimal spanning forest based method. And one of uh, my former uh, grad, grad student working on this project. And so we use a uh, dissimilarity between pixels and its neighborhood and then compute and the spectral angle mappers and for image classifications of normal or cancer cells. And so this paper is published in IEEE's and uh, there's more details uh, can be found if I'm interested. We also developed other image classification method. And uh, so this one is called a tensor-based uh, tissue classification. And we use a spectral and a spatial tensor representation. And we first built the training tensors and created the training features. And for testing samples, and so the testing tensor is then applied to the projection filters. And so the final step of the classification and is result is a tumor and the normals at the pixel levels. So we compared the performance of uh, hyperspectral imaging and multispectral imaging. As many of you know, familiar with the multispectral imaging that have been widely used for many years. And it, you only use a dozen or a couple of dozens of spectral band. With hyperspectral imaging, and uh, now use hundreds of spectral band. So when the number of band increase and in this experiment, and uh, the sensitivity, specificity, and also accuracy uh, increase and indicated the powers potentially you get more information for more spectral band. So after some kind of testing in animal uh, xenograph model, we now move to kind of more complicated uh, naturally occurring tumor models. And this is called a uh, chemically induced cancer model. So we use a uh, 4NQO, it's a carcinogen. We dilute it into uh, the drinking waters and then uh, the mouse drink these waters after some weeks or months and we, uh, develop, they developed the tongue cancers. So every four weeks we acquired hyperspectral imaging and also autofluorescence image and also fluorescence image with two vital dyes and uh, two MBDGs and also plurifarins. And for image, each image acquisitions, we have the quality control and that's an important part. And we use a white reference and also dark current for normalizations. Uh, we use the same protocols and the same illumination times and exposure time and inserters uh, throughout this experiment. So here are some uh, sample image of different spectral band. So if you look at a different uh, spectral uh, band level, uh, it's not easy to detect uh, tumors using the image of a single band. So here is some spectral curve and from health tissue 
and from the displeasure and the carcinoma in situ and also carcinomas. And these are average curves. You can say a spectral difference among different tissue type. However, if you look at the pixel level, it is not easy to differentiate them because of noise and because of tissue composition and because of other factors. So if you look at the surrounding neighborhood, you may find some similarity or dissimilarities. And if you have a large database of same tumor type, you may be able to find some pattern. So we need some effort to build the database for different type of cancer and develop some standard quantification tools. And this would allow us to turn the big data into knowledge and discover some cancer spectral as a fingerprint. So histology is the reference standards in our studies for validating the hyperspectral imaging. And this is kind of a challenging part because the, the mouse tongue is tiny and very small. And so we cut the tongue slice by slice longitudinally and also uh, perpendicular to the dorsal surface. And for each slice, we got one histologic slot image. So the pathologist outlined the tumors, uh, displacers, and other regions. You can see here, uh, the red is the carcinomas, the yellow is the carcinoma in situs, and uh, the green is displacers. And this is uh, another example, actually, one tongue, and you have different grade of the tumors. And from left, you can see the carcinoma and uh, the carcinoma in situ and displacers and uh, the health tissues. So the reference standards set up, and then the next is how to do the validations. And so after pathological gradings for each slice, we use the histology and uh, to do uh, kind of the correlation studies. And so at the top is the tissue slice uh, of a single uh, mouse tongue. So at the bottoms and here from left, you can see the first is reflectance hyperspectral image. And then the second is fluorescence image with the vital dye and two MBDG. And third one is the fluorescence image with proflavorance. So we register the histologic image and also uh, the imaging, the fluorescence imaging, hyperspectral imaging, after registrations, and then we perform pixel by pixel uh, validation. So uh, we tested uh, 11 classifier for hyperspectral tissue classifications, including uh, linear discriminator analysis and the random forest and support work machines and all different uh, classic classification methods. So we use the IOCs and area on the curves, accuracy, sensitivity, specificity to evaluate the classification results. So uh, based on the histology reference standards, here are the diagnostic accuracies of hyperspectral imaging with different classifiers. And you can say the assembled linear discriminate analysis method performs well in this study uh, with uh, AUC of uh, 0 0.8. So after we do uh, these uh, animal studies, uh, testings, validations, and we move to uh, clinical studies. So in the past year, and we perform a clinical study of uh, 204 human patients. So uh, two PhD students, Anna Guanandu and uh, Martin Hanisek, I work on this project in past years. Uh, we also have a surgeon, Dr. Amy Chen, and a pathologist, and a James Little, uh, on these studies. So what do we do? We recruit a patient, a 204 patient, who will undergo head neck surgery. So for each patient, we connect three types of tissue during surgery. So it includes a cancer tissue, and that's from the cancer uh, regions, and also a little bit normal tissue, 
and also the mix of tumor and cancer tissue basically is at the boundaries apart. So we developed a standard protocol for image acquisition and for these tissues. So we work with the pathologist and to establish the histologic ground truth for each tissue. So here is the patient population at distributions. So we have uh, 102 head neck squamous cell carcinoma patient. We have 82 and a thyroid and cancer patient. We also have uh, 20 other type of uh, uh, cancer patient. So if we look at the data set, and so from these 204 and a patient, so we got uh, 567 specimen uh, from surgery. And so we have the hyperspectral imaging and acquisitions and by pixel pixels. So we have 43 million pixel spectral data set that are useful. And for normal tissues, and we have more than uh, 11 million pixels of spectral. For tumor tissues, we have um, also more than 10 million uh, spectral uh, pixels. Uh, also for the tumor and the normal margin tissues, we have uh, about uh, 20 million pixels of spectral. Uh, these data set and uh, provide um, uh, rich information for us to do a lot of uh, uh, further quantification and analysis. So here are some spectral of the tumor and the normal tissue at different sites, uh, such as the oral cavity and uh, the thyroid, uh, nanorex and insertors. So the average curves seems different uh, between normal and uh, tumor tissues, but if plus the standard deviations, there's some overlap. And in this case, a simple kind of uh, processing will not work at all. So we need more kind of advanced image processing and a quantification tool. So we develop a framework of hyperspectral image processing and quantification. So the framework include a set of pre-processing technique to reduce the image distortions, noise, and etc. So the first step is uh, uh, the first step is the pre-processing is to convert a raw hyperspectral data into a percentage reflectance. And so the second step is to register the image at, uh, to reduce the motion artifact, if there's any, especially for animal study. And after that, so the glare uh, were detected and uh, removed. And the, the final step was to perform a curvature um, compensations and uh, to compensate for the spectral variations. So after uh, pre-processing and multiple uh, spectral features are extracted as shown at the bottoms. And so have a feature extractions and then feature selections and then finally you do a uh, classifications. And so this is kind of a, a classic uh, method and for imaging quantification and a classification processing. So here's uh, uh, examples of using hyperspectral imaging for tumor matching assessment of a fresh surgical uh, tissue specimen. And for each patient, we use the image of the tumor and a normal to train the classifications algorithm. And then use the tumor within JSON normal tissue, the mixed tissues, and to test the performance of the classification models. And this is we call it intra-patient uh, training testing classifications. And uh, we'll talk about another uh, uh, called inter-classification later. So after hyperspectral imaging acquisitions, and so the tissue was processed and histologically, and the tumor margins as outlined on the pathology slides as shown on the bottom right. And so that used to validate and the hyperspectral imaging classification predictions as shown on the top and the right as well here. And so by correlating the histologies and also the hyperspectral imaging and processing, 
and you can do the validations. So the image on the left side, you can see uh, the spectrals of the tumor, normal, and a tumor with uh, adjacent normal tissues. You can see uh, the hyperspectral image in this case match with the histology uh, pretty well. So the conventional machine learning method, including uh, linear discriminator analysis, random forest, support work machines. So we uh, have tested all these uh, conventional classifier as shown on the graph at the top right. And so the linear and discriminant analysis perform well. And uh, so that's uh, for this kind of cohort patient. So image at the bottom, and you can see here, it uh, uh, shows that normal tissue, tumor tissues, and also adjacent uh, normal and the tumor tissues. So the hyperspectral imaging result and also corresponding uh, ground truth and uh, match well in this case as well. So this is another uh, representative prediction result. And so the training data is include a tumor and a normal sample. And the testing data is, is the one and uh, has the mixed tissue interface. And so we generate a cancer probability map, you can say in the middle, called a predicted tumor map. And outline the tumor boundary, and you can see there's. And also on the right side, you can see the pathology reference standard from a pathologist. So the probabilities and uh, from the hyperspectral imaging uh, match uh, very well with the uh, pathology uh, reference standards. So we have developed both conventional machine learning method and also a deep learning method for hyperspectral image data set. And so for conventional machine learning, we extract the handcraft features and uh, optimize and then select the features and then use the classifier to get the output. You have different category, different classes. For deep learnings, and uh, we input the hyperspectral data into the neural network, into the, you can say input layer, hidden layers and output layer. I will show some of the uh, thing we have uh, next few slides. So the neural network will automatically extract the uh, features and then perform the classifications and to get the output. So uh, this is uh, one uh, example. So in these studies, we use uh, Inception V4 and uh, neural network architectures as shown on the left side. And this is probably the busy slides and you don't need to uh, look at the diagrams. We just published uh, these papers and uh, a few months ago and uh, said so there's more details. So the same architecture was customized and uh, to hypercube data set in the imaging and patch, and as, for example, 25 by 25 and by C. So the C is the number of spectrals you can select. And so the CNN, uh, we use uh, TensorFlow and uh, Ubuntu machine learning and running the NVIDIA's uh, Titan's uh, XP uh, GPU. And so the earlier convolution layers was modified to handle the selected patch size and also uh, create a small inception block that allow for fast training and classifications. So the result and shows that uh, hyperspectral imaging is able to detect tumor margins with accuracies of uh, 90% for conventional squamous cell carcinomas. And for um, HPV positive squamous cell carcinomas, actually the accuracy is much higher, it's about 97%. We also use a similar and uh, same ends and for detections of thyroid tumors. We use a uh, cross entropy uh, as a loss function. And uh, so the training task takes about a uh, whole day, it's 23 hours. And the testing for each patient is about uh, 20 seconds. So we are able to achieve uh, area under the curve of uh, 0.9 for detection of thyroid cancer tumors. So there's more result here shows. Actually one very interesting result is we use the hyperspectral imaging to synthesize and the human eyes 
kind of RGB and image and you snatch and to perform classifications and let's get the, the best results. And that's very interesting. So you use the whole spectral data search, but I generate some image and then use that image and to get a better classifications. So our goal is to use hyperspectral imaging for image guided surgeries. So we are uh, collaborating with uh, Dr. Gustavo and uh, Calico group and in Spain, uh, where a uh, demonstrate systems has been used for brain tumor surgeries in uh, 36 human patient. So we uh, uh, develop a deep learning based uh, framework and for in vivo detections of uh, uh, GBMs and use hyperspectral imaging of a human brains. Uh, this is ongoing uh, collaborations research project. We are, are further developing augmented reality systems and for hyperspectral image guided surgery and the imaging on the left side, you can see uh, we're testing some of the augmented reality systems and how to integrate with our uh, image guided systems. And this is also a, a ongoing a research project. So this is a, a big pictures and for the operating room in the futures. And uh, so what we hope we will hope to bring advanced uh, technology and to surgical rooms and uh, with high precision. And where the OR and has the integrated data set of the patient has the artificial intelligence tools as eight, has the capabilities for real-time detections and the monitoring and doing the procedures. And so this is my, uh, one of the last slides. And so optical imaging and artificial intelligence will have a role in these areas. Definitely this is one of the most exciting areas and we are pursuing. So um, uh, discussions, so we developed hyperspectral imaging method for detections of head neck cancer and in surgical specimens of uh, 204 patients. We developed also advanced image processing and a quantification and machine learning tools and for hyperspectral data set. So machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence and that will change the landscape and uh, will further and move uh, beyond and uh, what we learn uh, today. And hyperspectral imaging definitely show the promising result for assessing tumor margins in surgical specimen, ex vivo, and also in vivo uh, image guided uh, surgery. Uh, so I um, would like to thank my collaborators at the UT Southwestern Medical Centers, Emory University, and also University of Nas Palmer's and Grand Canaria in Spain. And I also thank my graduate students and a fellow and for their hard work. And the Center for Imaging and Surgical Innovation at the University of Texas at Dallas and the UT Southwestern Medical Centers provide resource and facility. And the research project is also supported by both internal and external fundings. And uh, I stop here and be happy to answer questions. And thank you for your attention.